You're listening to Alan James on Circle of White Light Radio and People's Internet Radio, focusing on solutions and thinking different. Hi folks, so welcome to Circle of White Light Radio. You have myself, Alan James, and it's, I'm just getting my paperwork ready here. It's Sunday, the 28th of April, 2019. Thanks a lot for tuning in, everybody. Uh, right, loads to uh, talk about tonight. Our guest on the show, uh, as announced there, is Thomas Williams. And I'm going to be bringing Thomas in a little bit early because I have a few things to actually talk about. And I want Thomas to comment them on them as well. And then there's a, there's a number of things that I'll be talking to Thomas about. But I just want to mention a couple of things. Um, we just got the news, the sad news, that Anthony J. Hilder died last Thursday after a very long illness. Now, uh, Anthony uh, J. Hilder is one of the old guards, a bit like Jim Mars, who's been exposing the cabal for years. And he coined the phrase Illuminati. Um, and I have to say, when we first started, when me and Steve first started OM Radio, and we were looking for guests to come on, um, a chap that got in contact with us, Alan Karna, who's a musician, and we played Alan's music uh, on our show, um, said uh, he was a friend of Anthony J. Hilders. And he said, uh, would you like Anthony to come on your show? And me and Steve kind of said, wow, having Anthony G.A. Hilda on the show, that'd be fantastic because we've seen a lot of his YouTube videos and what he was doing. So Anthony was one of the main, the first big hitters that we had on OIM Radio all them years ago. And I think he's been on again. I think a few years later we got Anthony back on and we did another show with him. And he exposed a lot of things, and he's been doing it for so long. And obviously, ill health, um, you know, like Jim Mars passed over as well not long ago there. And um, so we just like to, you know, I'd just like to send uh, uh, our condolences to Anthony, uh, Anthony's wife and the family, um, and you know, congratulate him on all the work that he did regarding the cabal. Um, you know, it's it's he did some great work really exposed a lot and he was one of the old guards so a tip of the cap to Anthony and uh, a big thank you for Alan Karna um, who actually um, introduced Anthony to us and, and asked Anthony to come on OAM. Uh, we were very privileged uh, we feel uh, so thanks to Alan for doing that as well um, and uh, hopefully he's up with Jim Mars having a drink there and talking about wow what, what a ride that was down there on, on the planet you know. So, um, sorry to hear about Anthony, but I, I, I know he's in a better place. Right, okay. Before we crack on, let's find out what the communication channels are. The communication channels are email. Contact us at circleofwhitelight.com by phone 046-927-1212 or sign up to our newsletter via our website at circleofwhitelight.com. There you go, communication channels. Now we have the chat room, circleofwhitelight.com. The chat room's there. You can log in uh, as a guest for now. So if you just type your name and click on the guest button, you can actually log in and uh, join in on the chat room. And uh, basically on People's Internet Radio, just a chat room over there. Hello to everybody on People's Internet Radio as well. Uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, listening to um, uh, myself there. Now, uh, also, the thanks to people who are still supporting myself and Steve on Patreon as well. Um, it, we do appreciate it. It does take money to run a radio show. You know, there are costs involved. And uh, I know we're, I'm we're on a sabbatical on OIM at the moment. And, you know, people have said, oh, what, what's going to happen to OIM and, and all that kind of stuff? Well, as I say, we're just on a sabbatical. Steve is off doing his thing, he's enjoying the break and he's having some fun time with the family um, and I'm just experimenting with um, the Circle of White Light Radio and, and working on, you know, getting people on and talking about solutions and and uh, just, you know, maybe spiritual things and other things that are going on as well, it's just something that I had planned uh, a few years ago that was always in the back of my mind and I thought, yeah, I'd actually like to do that. So we're just taking a bit of a break. I mean, after nine years of doing OIM, nearly nine years, you know, it's good to kind of have a bit of a change. 
And uh, so that was what we're doing. We're taking a break and uh, in, in enjoying what we're doing. And um, so it, it is a sabbatical. So don't worry about the OAM. But all the videos and everything are still on our YouTube channel. And uh, you can find all the videos there uh, of all the podcasts and shows that we've done. And um, we still have the Facebook page and we still have the MeWe page. Um, I don't have anything set up for Circle White Light at the moment. I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. I'm still thinking about it. But um, we'll see what happens anyway. So there you go. So that's the communication channels if you want to uh, contact us or send an email to contact us at circleofwhitelight.com. If you want to send uh, a PayPal or donation uh, to circleofwhite.com, uh, circleofwhitelight.com, go to the website and click on the PayPal button and you can make a donation there. And trust me, it's very much appreciated. Um, to uh, get the bills paid right okay so without further ado well I'm going to get Thomas in because um, there's a few things that I want to go through but I want to get Thomas's take on these as well and see where he he thinks uh, of these things that I'm going to be reading now a bit of the news so uh, good evening Thomas how are you I I'm fine uh, round four four days four, four days four shows so uh, I hope this will be just as good as the other three yeah exactly and, uh, yeah You've, you and I want to say uh, happy birthday to uh, an old mucker of mine back in Liverpool, uh, John Bryan. It's, uh, it's his birthday today, so happy birthday to John Bryan. That's right. I've seen uh, John's uh, profile come up, but uh, I sent him a bit of a happy birthday on Facebook. So, Thomas, it's your first time being on Circle of White Light Radio. Yes. You yes. know, it's, And it just feels like I just spoke to you a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> or a few minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, a few uh, minutes yeah. Ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you, you know, it's come, we've come a long way, but both of us, yeah. and, well, and Steve as well. You know, we yeah. mustn't forget him. Yeah. Uh, you know, from uh, the late March, I think it was March the twenty seventh, something like that. Anyway, and uh, three years ago that I came on OYM and. Uh, mess with people's heads with. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember your fourth show. I think I said, Hi Larry, how are you doing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, who's this guy telling us that seventy percent of the alt media's uh, corrupted? Uh, yeah. Only to find out that was a low figure. Well <laughs> but, I I was actually speaking to the guest I'm gonna have on next week who's in Australia and I give him the bad news and <laughs> I think I think his uh, jaw dropped a little bit when I told him um, a few things, a few truths about the alt media, and um, he, uh, yeah. So he's going to go it's off. Sad. And do, yeah, I but know. I found it sad, you know. Um, our shows exposed the number. It was, it was a case of having to. A lot of it was uh, the financial ones, and uh, some of the other programs that are not too pleasant, uh, disempowering and. Uh, non-disclosure, in essence, you know, and uh, I felt uh, around four years ago, five years ago, there was, uh, let's just say there was a change in timelines, and we had to go forward in a different way, you know, and I'm hearing a, 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 a lot of the the old alt media, but it's they're still talking about flat earth and RVs and this, that and the other. You know, the narrative's not changed. And you know, and your show has and THI certainly has. You know, uh, we're looking more away from uh, this one's doing this and this politician's doing that and more is what are we gonna do? Because that that's the ultimate goal, and this is largely what we're going to be discussing today. THI, you now OIM has now morphed into two separate departments because uh, you're going with the flow of the change. I said in the call yesterday on the Zoom call, mm. and eventually THI itself will be phased out, but it will become the People's Club show, uh, <coughs> and bringing in people who have been funded and how their projects are going on and, and, and it become more grassroots as such of how you know I can bring in 209 different countries so there'll be plenty of uh, topics to, to discuss with people around the world of how the, they're developing their country and infrastructure and what projects they're doing and how well it's doing and et cetera, et cetera. Well, we have to we have to say to the the listeners who aren't aware that we had a Zoom meeting yesterday, and there's I don't know about twenty, thirty, forty people 
on, I'm not too sure what the numbers were on Zoom. Yeah, uh, 78 was the, I got up to at one point. 78 people on, on Zoom yesterday talking about the rollout of THI and the People's Club globally. So um, we are very busy in the background, Thomas. I know you're up to your eyeballs at the moment. And um, there's a lot going on people aren't aware of that we're getting a lot of work done. Um, just getting things organised but I'm going to go through a few things here I want to go through with you just the things that happen around the world and uh, we can have a chat about it um, and yeah. first, the first thing is um, this is from a website called truththeory.com and uh, this is going to uh, more on the positive side 1.5 million volunteers plant 66 million trees in 12 hours the central Indian state of Maya Pradesh set a new world record after 1.5 million volunteers planted more than 66 million tree saplings in just 12 hours along the Namada River. The effort based uh, the state of Uttar Pradesh's previous record-breaking feat uh, bested uh, when 800,000 participants planted 50 million trees in one day in July 2016. The Chief Minister of uh, Pradesh boasted the achievement. I am extremely proud uh, to happily share that people of Maya Pradesh successfully planted 6.63 core saplings today. One core equals eight. Uh, e- sorry, one core equals 10 million. Now, with all this 5G that's going on and all the trees being cut down, it's great to see India actually planting trees. Well, it's. Um <coughs> It's not just India. Uh, there's been uh, stuff done in South America. There's been stuff done in uh, Africa. Um, I think I did a, a story, a news item, maybe uh, six, seven months ago, where they were talking about planting a load of trees on the edge uh, of the Sahara Desert, which then makes it uh, fertile again. So, you know, <coughs> where it, the trees will then draw in the water from the Nile, uh, and other uh, tributaries and then suddenly uh, that desert turns back into fertile land which is what it was to begin with uh, there, there was no deserts on this planet they were created so, that's so uh, you know, it's a good thing uh, and it shows what happens when the people get together the, yeah. there's your example of people coming together for a, a cause now the, the the object of that is that's one circle. Yeah. We get another circle to go and do, and another circle, and suddenly those circles start overlapping, and then it goes right around the world, and, and that's the end end goal for for what we're doing uh, with THI and and your group it is creating circles, uh, you know, and coming together and working together. Not my idea is better than your idea and all that rubbish, mm. you know. Uh, it's about people we have to learn to uh, communicate with each other again Mm -hmm. you know you you often hear people saying we want to meet the ETs well we don't even communicate well enough with our own country members never mind other countries Mm -hmm. and so that that in and of itself is a change Mm -hmm. it may seem small compared to other things but look what uh, India have done Uh, was there a million and a half trees or whatever they all came together and worked for the course and when everyone comes together you have no idea of your own power if they can all come together to build those trees they can all come together to to do something to do another project and then another project and then another project can suddenly transform India which is still operating under the Ra or Raj, uh, <laughs> nice play on words, um, and the caste system. No, we have to get rid of that hierarchy and caste systems. You know, that's the old system. Yeah. We need a new one. New one. So that shows you the power of the people. And that's what, that's what we need to do. So, yeah, 66 million trees in 12 hours. Right, okay, PCMag.com. Again, something I come across, and I thought it was worthwhile saying, the first 6G conference is coming up. So it's bad enough with the 5G. The next generation of wireless connectivity should be arriving around 2030, and bright minds in northern Finland are looking at ideas. 
Barcelona, Donald Trump said the US should lead in 6G. He may not have known that the path there is already starting to be paved. At MWC19 on Tuesday, academics from Northern Finland said they're having the first 6G conference and are taking requests. Yeah, okay, I'm not too happy <laughs> about that. A couple, cu- couple of things. Uh, interesting that they mentioned 2030. You know, we had the uh, Agenda 21 and then uh, got pushed back to Agenda 30. So it's rather interesting that they mentioned that. And that gives you a guideline that this is part of um, a fear program. Now, what the, you know, if you listen to the extreme end of 5G, we're all going to die. So what this is telling you is they're going to roll 6G out in uh, 11 years' time. Well, if we're all going to die from 5G, what, why are they rolling out 6G? So it's not as bad as it's being made out. And, that, you know, and I've said repeatedly, I'm not saying it's great, but it's nowhere near as bad as what it's being made out to be. And it's another fear program that they've run consistently through the mainstream media and also the old media. It was Nibiru was coming, the chemtrails are going to kill us all. Well, it didn't, did it? The Ebola, H1N1, uh, the Zika virus, which was the, the big cabal program for 2017, where did it go? It failed. And this will fail because people will, will develop their consciousness and, and package it and format it in a way that will, like they've done with the chemtrails, and counteract it. Mm. Yeah, that's fair enough. You know, I, so I am seeing a lot of people waking up. <coughs> you know. that, that's, you know, I'm, I, I'm not for one minute saying it's not, it's great and it's all good. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is they're using it as a fear based, low vibrational program. Mm. That's why. You know, uh, uh, you've been listening to the extreme ones saying we're all going to die from 5G. Well, why are they planning 6G in 11 years' time if we're all dead? Yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense. Mm. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to get people to see. Yes, it's a concern. So was the chemtrails. Mm. But we all didn't die, did we? Mm. Okay, you, you know, know that's, that's, that's great, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll get through these. Um, I think this was written by politicians. You'll, you'll understand why when I read it out. This is from a website called abc7chicago.com. It said, a man's rapid heartbeat returns to normal when ambulance hits pothole. He, uh, the article says, it would be hard to find anyone who likes potholes, but hitting one apparently saved a Nebraskan man's life. Um, it says, the paramedics were racing a 59-year-old man to the hospital, um, KDRK reported. He had a dangerously rapid heartbeat of 200 beats per minute. When the ambulance hit a pothole, medics said the man's heartbeat suddenly returned to normal. Doctors say this is rare, but it can happen. One way to treat that is with an electrical shock. Classically, you'll see it on television with the paddles clear and a big jolt. Turns out you can do that with a pothole, one doctor said. The man is expected to fully recover. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can see the politician saying now, now look, um, we're not going to spend the money on the roads because exactly. them potholes there could save a life. <laughs> Did you say that was Chicago? Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm not surprised. Um, I, I, I went there once to see Everton, funny enough. And I've never seen anything like it. Uh, the main road into Chicago, I can't remember the number of it now. Um, it was, it wasn't just potholes. I'm talking about huge divots, <laughs> about a foot deep on the main interstate into downtown Chicago. And then you have uh, a load of um, overpasses, bridges that bridge over the dirt, lower road mm. and and it, it looks like someone's got a high powered uh, gun and and just sprayed the RSJ the steel beam mm. it was littered with holes it looked like someone got a high powered gun and fired right through it you could see right through the RSJ all the way down so I'm not surprised <laughs> <laughs> I'm just amazed that those bridges are still standing because I've never seen a, a steel beams that corroded where it's right through. There you go. Um, 
Well, that, that's, that's going to be on the Irish News shortly. Potholes save lives. I can yeah. see the politicians pushing that next. And the last, the, the last thing on the list is, no surprise here, uh, in the IrishTimes.com, which is an Irish newspaper, it said Irish doctors share 6.8 million payments from pharma companies. And the article says doctors and other healthcare professionals were paid 6.8 million by pharmaceutical companies in Ireland last year, according to a new report. Companies gave a forward of 10.7 million to healthcare organisations and 9.7 million to research and development. The report published by the Irish Pharmaceutical Healthcare Association. The industry has described the initiative, which includes the publication of payments made by companies across Europe, as a new level of transparency in the relationship between the sector and the healthcare organisation and professionals. As part of the initiative, the association changed its mandatory code of practice to require disclosure of transfers of value. The payments made were for research development funding, donations and grants to healthcare organisations, contributions to the cost of events, as well as fees and related expenses for services and consultancy. So, transfer of value. So, that's a new way of calling a padded envelope a padded envelope. It's a transfer of value. Yeah, well, this is... Uh, <laughs> you have... Um two entities on a corner of the road and they're both selling drugs and one goes to jail and one doesn't mm. when both are made accountable then we're going to have a better world yeah. you know, the hospitals uh, doctors and boots uh, are, is more familiar over there Walgreens and CBS over here are all drug pushes legalised drug pushes. There's no ifs or buts. That's what they're doing. The doctors are getting... Um, I remember when I, I left the UK, the doctor said to me, uh, um, have the flu jab? I went, you're joking, aren't you? So I asked him what his payment was, and he was getting £20 to pay a flu jab. Mm. That was back in 2000. Yeah. Uh, and and this, this is the problem, uh, is the doctors are uh, being bribed in some cases where they have no option, but going along with malpractice because what people have to grasp is doctors and nurses have no idea what's in those drugs. None. Mm. The people who sell them have no idea. The only ones who know is the top end. Well, uh, Merck and Glaxo Smith and all those people, you know, psychopaths in other words, and the World Horror Organization, not the World Health Organization, the World Horror Organization, because that group develops poisons, vaccines to make people sick to pass down the line. Mm. Yeah. And this is what people have to understand. You know, uh, you used to say uh, in uh, the old days, your life in their hands. Uh, no thanks. Mm. Exactly. No thanks. Well, as, as you always say, uh, Thomas, that's why it's called the doctor's practice. Yeah, the practice doesn't last it. They don't know it mm. because they don't even have a single minute of cures. Mm. They, don't, they, they don't go and analyze what's in those tablets or, or potions or creams. Yeah. They just read labels. Now, I, I, have to, I have to comment on this. Because I worked in the pharmaceutical sector, we, I used to support the sales guys, and that's all they did. They used to go to the doctor, open up the briefcase, here's the drugs we have, our drugs are better than their drugs, and whatever the perks are to actually take on the drugs. But, but those, the, those people are death merchants. Mm. Yeah. And they, and they don't stop and think. And this is where it comes an issue, is, well... Uh, I've sold sold my uh, my wares, and I don't care what happens. Yeah. No, you have, you have to think beyond pieces of paper with numbers on. Mm. You know, you know, as a nurse, if you're given injections, you should care enough to want to know what is in 
this that I'm giving to this person because potentially I could kill that person. Yeah. That's the way you, you, they should be thinking, but they're not. No. And this is, we'll get into it later, why we have to change every single profession on the planet because we, they've all been taught wrong or insufficient or don't have the real knowledge or missing knowledge. Yeah. No, we we will definitely get into that. I'll just finish up with this uh, Alan's Week article, and then we'll get into the questions. And um, just on the people on the chat room, if you do have a question, can you put it in uppercase or just put a Q beside it so I can see it on the chat room? And then I can uh, we'll ask your questions later on when we get through the questions we have here for Thomas. And um, the last thing on Alan's Week, just the one thing uh, people over here probably heard, as you know, Ben Gilroy was released from prison last week. And um, he was doing an interview on Dublin South FM. And in the middle of the interview, the show completely changed to another show. Ben was saying how he was going to fight the corruption and expose the secret societies. And the live stream just flipped to another show. Now, it turned out also, for people who don't know, that the, um, the courts have admitted that he was locked away for three months and it was a clerical error. They actually admitted it was a clerical error. So they, that man has been locked away from his family for three months and they admitted it was apparently a clerical error. So um, as Ben says, he, I, hope he has, I hope they have a lot of insurance. So he's going to go after them. Um, so it's good to see Ben uh, out now and, and back to normal. But yeah, a, 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 a clerical error was made and locked the man up for three months, uh, which is bang over order. Right, okay, now... Let's get into the questions, Thomas, because we have a few questions to go through and, you know, um, people have sent over questions during the week and were asking about things and he said, can you ask Thomas what his take on this, is on this subject and everything else? So we'll go through it. Um, do I, I don't think I need to give you an introduction of who you are. I mean, you're, God, you, you, you know, you'll be coming to the staff party shortly, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll be charging me, then. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Right, okay. The first question that we have on the list, and something that needs to be said, and in, out in public as well, we've talked about this, but I think it needs to be said on air. Um, people have said, uh, there's two sides to this. It's about you and about uh, me, Steve, OAM and stuff like that. Yeah. And the first thing is they said um, is that how come Thomas was selected by the foundation? He's not a politician. He's not an academic. He doesn't have the media coverage or the support from thousands and thousands of people. Like, he's not on the TV. Um, and... Um, so why was Thomas picked to be uh, running the foundation? Why was he selected? So I'll let you pass that over to you and you give you give me your thoughts on, on that. Yeah, um, I have certain abilities that other people don't. Um, there's, uh, it's not necessarily academic, although uh, I think my own... Uh, research on what I've put into it stand, uh, stands for itself. Um, I'm not in it for the money. Um, I am more than 70%, if not more than 80%, committed to service to others, which is the key. There's a lot of people who, who want to do certain positions because it's perceived as being important and forget that it's doing important work, not about being important. I'm not interested in titles, I'm not interested in money. If you were interested in money, we would have took the two billion and walked away. Two billion dollars we were offered to walk away. Most people would have took it. We know that, because that's the way uh, the world works these days, that you fall for the, for the seducement. But the old system of hierarchy that you must be famous, you must be a personality, you have to be a, a royal or a, a superstar actor or actress or a major business owner to do anything is poor thinking. It's the old way that failed. How has that served we the people? It hasn't. So 
uh, I apologise, well, I'm not really, uh, for not being a media personality, but that's exactly what the people needed. A guy or a girl who's uh, an average, everyday person, because that's what we're dealing with, largely, everyday people, and getting everyday people onto a better stage and a better platform for them to perform. We're not looking up to false gods like the Rothschilds, and we're not looking up to that, uh, you know, Brad Pitts and uh, Angeli Jolie. What have they done for the people? Nothing. They've harvested the people's energy and all worship them like they're on a different level when the reality is nobody is on any level above anybody else on this planet. And we have to go back to that where leaders are not something to be put on a pedestal. As, as Kim said, leaders are the ones at the bottom, not the top. They're guiding the ones in front of them, not below them. Again, that's a change of thinking. And that's what I said in the very first show. We're going to think and act different. It's not about Kim is the be-all and end-all, or I'm the be-all and end-all, or anybody else is the be-all and end-all. It's about us all. Mm. Okay. You know, uh, and you, you have to go away from the, the old system, and, the, uh, and it is an old system, that failed most of the people. Yeah. Uh, uh, Nelson Mandela's importance in Africa. Well, what did he do for the African people? Remembering he was the trustee. He was one of the trustees for Marduk. What did he do for the African people? Nothing. Mm. Yeah. Mar Marcos was the Pindar and the trustee. What did he do for Indonesia and all the tribal people and Fiji and all Java and all those islands and the Philippines? Nothing. Mm. Because he was a big name. So it didn't, the big names and the idolatry hasn't worked. Mm. You only have to look at religion for that. You, you've got billions of people telling them Jesus is coming to save them so they don't do nothing themselves. Yeah. It hasn't worked. Yeah, and he hasn't gone back yet. Whether it be Allah or Jesus or, or some other entity, uh, Quetzalcoatl, have they come back to save their people? No. Okay, well, and go ahead. And, and so we have to do it. And we won't do that by elevating people on a platform that is not required. Yeah. Well, the reason why I wanted to mention that is because we've also been, um, OEM and uh, uh, yourself and Steve, we have been uh, in some parts of the op media sidelined. Um, because... Um, Again, we're not in, we don't put ourselves out there. We don't have, you know, pictures of ourselves out there. We're not in the media. We're not in politics. We don't get involved in the groups, um, certain groups. You know, we, we try and sit in the fence. And because we're alt media and we do some, as people say, woo-woo stuff, you know, like we, we challenge what we, our belief system and we get people on to talk about things outside the normal water meters and smart meters and 5G. Um, some people would say, oh yeah, don't go on their show because um, they're into this stuff and if, if you go on their show, you will be labelled. So that's one of the things that uh, there's an attitude yeah. out there by some individuals. But also the other question along with that was, why did Thomas um, decide to work with uh, Alan and Steve um, for the foundation? Why them? Uh, because they've got the right aptitude and the right attitude. And they're driven. They've already started uh, doing the on-ground activist work. You know, um, I'm doing more now. But you not only were uh, promoting it, you also went out, put your boots and your coat on, and went out and did stuff for the homeless. Yeah. Well, they're the type of people that should be put forward. You know, <clears throat> there's too often uh, people will sit by and watch other people do it, and then when it, it, it suddenly it takes off, they want to do their, their role. 
Uh, I've had, had numbers of people trying to oust me out, out of this role. Uh, that won't happen. Uh, I can uh, guarantee that. Um, be, because they now perceive it, it was fine when it was all taken over and it was low key. Then suddenly it, it becomes big, and then people who have done nothing but sit on a ass um, and not contributing enough suddenly want one want in and want to play the, the lead role. So, I'm interested in people who have already done it, and Alan's already done it. Mm. You don't, people shouldn't need me to tell them that. Uh, it, the proof's in the pudding. So, Alan is the right one to run uh, THI, uh, not THI, the People's Club Ireland, because he's already done it. Mm. Well, we have, yeah. You know, it, 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 it's this type of thinking that kind of annoys me. There's very little things that annoy me, but it's it's low vibrational thinking. Why, Alan? Well, what what makes the person who asked that question even bother to ask it? What value does it? You know, we had a question uh, recently. Uh, why did King get picked to do the trustee, and who did he? Who cares? Hmm. What is Kim done? That is the focus, is what is Kim done? Mm. If Trump is one of the cabal and he does stuff for the people, declares sovereignty, do people care about that? No. It's the end goal. Mm. You know, and uh, it, it's wrong thinking. It, the pe the focusing on on uh, like somebody sent me uh, a, a Kim's divorce court documents and goes I hope you've got an explanation for that yes she got divorced who <laughs> 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 you know how can you call yourself awake and and be bothered with whether Kim got divorced or not is that going to fix the planet no well actually Thomas this kind of ties into the next question. Now, I was down in um, a location and talking to a few lads about, you know, we talk about the donation of $1 uh, or one euro a month. And if we yeah. had 200,000 people doing that, we'd have 200,000 euros coming in. And it was just amazing about, you know, we talk about things different. And the they, couple of lads in particular were looking for the reasons why not to do it, as opposed to the reasons why they should do it. Yeah, and it's just it's, amazing. Is, it's the old way this, of thinking again. Yeah, it's this. This is the biggest change that needs to be required. It's not about all us having loads of money out of the trust. The biggest change on this planet is, is a change of mindset, and that starts with you. We have to. There's so much to change. You know, Kim and I have spoken about the 489 aspects of life, but there's so many subcategories to that. It is why is the focus on uh, well why is Thomas doing that or why is Kim doing that or why is Alan doing that uh, why aren't you coming up with solutions that's going to help going forward mm. it's too much thinking in the now and the past uh, and the reason why Alan's also involved is he thinks of the future because that is your pioneer role because everything has to change you know, we've talked about bureaucracy. You know, the whole office system and the computer system has to be changed. It's complicated, it's confusing, all designed to wind people up and get them off balance. Mm. Because, because it doesn't make sense, and if it doesn't make sense on this planet, it means it's a program that's deliberate, like law. You know, it's written in Latin, uh, no surprise. And it's confusing, and it argues against itself when you really analyse small pieces of it, because I don't recommend anyone reading all of it, uh, because it's, it's a waste of time. It's babble. Mm. So it's not designed to make sense. It's like the banking system, and you're talking about hedge funds and, and derivatives and, and uh, uh, off bets and all this nonsense. The average person doesn't understand it. The average person doesn't want to understand how their own account works. Do you want to mention so, about the CEO of uh, uh, Wells Fargo? 
Yeah, well, I think it's important because we've spoken to the top central bank people. They don't understand microeconomics. Micro, not macro. Micro. How can the head of a central bank or the top CEO of Wells Fargo not understand microeconomics? Mm. And this is why uh, I said we'll get into this. Every single profession on this planet has to be uh, re, uh, redone over again. You've got, uh, you go in the construction industry, uh, you, there are people who can paint and then there are painters, two different things. There are people who can do joinery and then there are joiners. Of course, we've cut out the apprenticeships, so people are just getting taught any old way, just bang it up and that'll do. But that's not the real trade, is it? No. And we're getting there. The labourers are not really labourers. Let's put it that way. With the tradesmen, I should say. The tradesmen um, are not... Uh, well, and they've been, been trained. Years ago, I used to sit beside, I used to walk beside the expert, and you'd learn from being with them. And I, I can speak about this, uh, because when I, was, when I was living in London and I was teaching IT to the students, halfway through the actual time I was there... Uh, we went from, you know, classroom training, like everybody looks at me, and I do the, I tell them what to do, and they go off and do it, and then the new system came in where, here's a book, and you have to go through the book, and if you have any questions, ask the trainer, but the trainer doesn't do training anymore at the top of the class, and the students went nuts. They all said, no, we don't want that. But that was the new system. You know, I, I, I did... Um you know, I, I've been involved in I've been involved in a lot of things, but involved in construction and in painting and tiling and all kinds of other different things. Uh, so I had an idea, and then um, it was uh, I looked at a home inspection course, which is a inspector goes in and people say I want to buy this house, and they get called in on the inspector to go over the whole house. You've got people there who have no construction backgrounds, who read off cards and pat it back and can pass a test within one week of not knowing that subject and become a fully-fledged home inspector. Mm. One week. It's like this, this, the shamans in, in America and Peru, they've got one year's training you don't become a, a real shaman with one year's training. It, 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 you know, and this is what I'm saying. We have to look, we really have to look at every single profession. How can you be a nurse or a doctor and not have empathy? How can you understand psychology from a book? You can't. That's a, that's a 2D piece of paper. You've got to understand people to do psychology. So, so the, the, the whole psychology department needs to be changed. They've got to think in a different way. And then you've got the mental health. It's not even promoted or put forward as a suggestion that most people in mental health are there because they've been possessed. It's not even looked at. And so there's pieces of knowledge that are missing in every profession and are being taught in, in poor ways, anything will do uh, let's cause uh, and anything to do with uh, um, corporate structure is just create chaos for the customer you know, we've all had to fill in these ridiculous forms you know, I had to change from go to one state to the other and change my driver's license, I had to change the license plate, why? Mm. I, had to, I had to change the insurance. It doesn't make sense. You, you know, if I if I went from Liverpool to London, I'm not changing uh, my license plate or my license. Mm. Well, you change the address. Yeah. No, you have to have a whole new license. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's madness. But we we have to uh, we do have to change your way. I'm going to shoot these off to you, Thomas, because we have questions yeah. coming in now from the chat room. So. I'm going to just uh, kind of go through the... They're not in any particular order, but if you just want to do a quick answer. Why do people put stars and politicians on a pedestal? Why do we keep doing that? It's part of the programme, is that 
everyone who goes on that small box, which is not so small anymore, that sits in the corner of your living room or on the wall, is it more important than you? Because it's external of you. It's a bit, it applies the same way with religion. The God is external of you when actually the God's inside of you. Those people are not famous if nobody watches. Did he walk around with some special halo? No. They're just ordinary people. Uh, and we've elevated um, fairly talentless singers and actors compared to the past into gigantic superstars. Mm. So then it's all marketable. Because that's all it's based on when you uh, pull it down to the brass tacks is that person then becomes a brand and market. So uh, this person puts their name on a bottle of uh, toilet water mm. um, and suddenly everyone has to buy it because that person uh, endorsed it but that person doesn't even use it remember the, the person who did the coke advert who says they don't even drink coke yeah yeah <laughs> it, 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 you know it, 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 it doesn't make sense when, once you step back and analyse it there is no famous people it's only what you perceive yeah well it's the same it, it's, all famous people are is that somebody is known by a lot of people that's a famous person so and obviously if you're using the media or the radio to tell people about this person then it just means more people know about that person that's what really what fame is just that more people yeah. know, know you and, and the marketing and the branding mm. they, you know that's all done by the council of foreign relations mm. people yeah, that they mark, set this one up. So you know, is uh, uh, like I said, they use Britney Spears, who's one of the Monarch girls. They programmed that. They they were using her as a sex toy. All the politicians, and then let's promote this fourteen-year-old girl who looks rather pretty, rather sexy. You know, we can't deny that. And some may may even be interested in being sexually attracted to her. But that girl was 15, 14 or 15. And all the imagery of the schoolgirl and, and, and it was all played out. And it was setting us up for the next stage, which is the pedophilia. This is why you've got politicians trying to legalise it. Mm. It's get people used to liking young girls. Well, we have over here, we have Fine Gael, who is the current party, are trying to bury records for 75 years of abuse, abuse records for 75 years. And even, and their excuse is that, oh, the victims don't want these uh, released. And the victims are saying, no, we do want them released. So why I, I, victims don't have a choice. Yeah. You know? So I said to uh, Fine Gael people that came to my door, I said, we call them, I call them personally, and this is my opinion, the uh, Pedophile Supporters Party, because... Um, who would want to bury... The only reason you bury records for 70 or 55 years is to cover up the people who did it because they're still alive. That's the only, why you, that's the only reason why you hide it. Not for oh, it's state secrecy or national security. No, what you're doing is covering it up because the people who are on that list are still alive and they, they will be exposed if it all came out. So um, that would be one of the first things that I'd get changed straight away. Okay, let's get on to the questions. More questions for you. Well, I'll um, give you two examples of that. Ted Heath and Jimmy Savile. Yeah. Scotland Yard knew about both of them. Mm. 30, when, I, when I was still in the UK. Mm. But it went all the way to the palace, so they pulled out. Yeah. Well, exactly, because they're t t told it. Yeah, you know, it's the fine to tell, tell the tale now, as dead people can't talk. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, but again, a lot of the stuff is coming out on that as well. Right, okay, next uh, question. They're just kind of random questions um, that have been uh, sent through. Um, Israel is not installing 5G, and we, I made a comment that there was a, uh, an article that a Russian, or a Brussels uh, minister in Brussels, a female minister, 
has also decided not to roll out 5G in Brussels. And I mentioned this to you when we were talking before. Do you want to comment on that? Well, Brussels is run by the same people that run the country of Israel, or the country now known as Israel. It's the same people as the houses. You know, Israel's a false country. It was never there to begin with. Belgium is a false country. Switzerland is a false country. You know, uh, there's a, a number of uh, countries that have been added, and a number of countries like so Prussia was taken away, Tartaria was taken away, Yugoslavia was taken away, Czechoslovakia was taken away, and they create these uh, sub countries. And when people tend to forget, how many people remember Zaire? Yeah, I remember that. I remember, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, you know, but quite quickly it gets it gets forgotten. Yeah. You know, uh, and um, now it's now it's gone. It's the Congo, but it's not just the Congo. There's two Congos now. Like uh, there's uh, Bosnia Herzegovina, Montenegro, Serbia, and all, uh, and a few others. Macedonia, they're all split up. And, and it's it's separating into the houses. This goes back to from Russia with love. It's the same people. Brussels, Belgium, and parts of Luxembourg were part of Holland. Switzerland is another false country. It was part of France, and then the houses split it up. Mm. It's these same houses, the cult of Ra, that are running is Ra L. The country, they run in Brussels, same people. So that's why it's not being implemented in Israel and be, and uh, not being implemented in uh, yeah, Brussels. Yeah, because the, they want to get rid of the goyim. Remember? Yes, exactly. And the goyim are people who are non-Jewish. Yes. Yeah. Um, just for people who've never heard that statement before, that's what goyim is. Um, and there's a lot of history behind that. Uh, Tommy has done. Uh, shows called Russia with Love 1, 2 and 3 and he's preparing Russia with Love 4 at the moment and it goes through the whole history of what happened there and uh, definitely worth a listen folks we'll get Tommy's details at the end of the show and he'll, uh, Thomas can give it out and um, go over and have a listen when you have time, very interesting information um, right uh, Thomas, the banks I'm just speaking from Ireland but I'm sure it's the banks around the world the banks want people to keep 3k, 3,000 in your account, um, and if you do that, they won't charge you. They won't, you know, there won't be any bank charges. Um, do you want to tell us why they're interested in having people keep 3k in their bank account? So they have a flow funds which they don't currently have. Mm. But um, how many people have got three thousand dollars to put in a bank? Very few. Yeah. It, 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 you know, th these people are beyond stupid. Again, we have to, you know, uh, Kim and I, uh, more so Kim, has changed the banking system because these people didn't realise it was a harvesting program that was going to harvest them as well. They, they uh, kind of left that bit out, uh, and it doesn't work. Bank the banking uh, as it is again. Like every other profession, it has to be changed radically, some more radical than the other. It, how can you have uh, an entity that has no assets and no money of its own suddenly you have 70 story buildings in every town and city? Mm. Can you imagine the, the, the old heads? And uh, just for that, why? for convenience mm. and they're all competing with each other and, and as you compete you're just uh, uh, sieving out the lower end ones and it gets harvested into the top they're all like vultures mm. they're just waiting for the lower ones to die and then they all pluck it up and then, then the next stage goes on and then you're left with conglomerate banks it's the same with the core part of structure it's all about harvesting trampling over each other to get to the top job trampling uh, outdoing and outbidding and cutting uh, other businesses out so they go down but eventually you'll go down because if you keep cutting things 
and, and not the prices. Eventually, you, you like the Ouroboros, which is the whole, how the whole financial system works. It's the Ouroboros. It's the snake, <laughs> the snake eating its own tail. If you keep eating and chewing at both ends, you are left with just a set of teeth mm. <laughs> and nothing else. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, um, and so if they're trying to tell you, uh, I had this discussion with a bank manager, she said, you must keep uh, $1,500 in your account, otherwise uh, you're paying $15 a month account fee. So I said, why don't you charge account fees to people who have tens of or hundreds or millions in their account? Because $15 won't make a blind bit of difference to them. Why are you charging the people who have little to nothing in their account all the fees for your bank? Yeah. Oh, I never thought of that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really? It makes logical really? sense, doesn't it? It does make sense. But there you go. That's banks way. Now, apparently Ulster Bank is now charging customers every time you withdraw your own money. It's not even their money. When you withdraw your money, they're going to charge you to take... Well, so you're, you're better off not dealing with a bank or go to a credit union. Well, it's, that's fairly simple. You withdraw the whole lot in one go and go buy. Yeah. Because if everyone does that, there is no bank. So they can charge whatever fees they like when they've got no customers. Yeah. It yeah, totally... Pe and it's something people power. Yeah, and that's what... People, we do have the, the strength in numbers, but people don't seem to realise that, or they don't want to. You know, I say about people being in their comfort zone, <clears throat> not so much harmony, but in their comfort zone, to a stage where they, they might be struggling and stuff like that, but they're just hanging on, and I'm going to keep on hanging on. I don't want to actually do anything more than what I have to do. I'll just keep on hanging on and, and hope that things change. You know, and... No, and, won't. No, won't. I don't. Yeah, and this this is the problem, and people just you know they hanging on, not realizing that the system's coming down around them if we don't do something about it. Mm. That there are good, Stop. yeah, there are good people over here in Ireland who are, you know, trying to do their best. And but as you said, uh, Thomas, and I totally agree with you, um, politicians don't fix anything, and they've no interest in doing it. Well, they can't even if they wanted to. They're not relevant. If, you, if you're blaming the government, you don't understand the system. They're not relevant. <laughs> They're less relevant than we are. They're just puppets. Uh, uh, theatre. You know, politics is pure theatre. You know, I, I gave this example, I think it was on the Friday show, where uh, idiot Bush, Bush Jr. and Obama both passed for the wall. So did Pelosi. We need a wall at the southern border. Mm. Trump comes in and goes, I'm going to build the wall, and they flip and say, no, we don't need it. Mm. And, and people don't remember it. Yeah. And they rely on our lack of, lack of memory. Yeah. Irish politics is the same. When you have the opposition party, like Fianna Fáil opposition, so they'll be shouting, they could be shouting saying, we have to stop 5G, we have to stop 5G. And if they get voted in, and then people say, hey, you were talking about stopping 5G. And you go, yeah, well, we have to change our mind on that now. And, and then the party who was in, who then becomes the opposition, starts shouting, we have to stop 5G. This yeah. is the game. That's the theatre. That's yeah. how they do it. And that's how and people fall for it. That's the, they're not the problem. We are. Because the, the, they keep doing the same thing. This is why I talk about recognising the pattern. They do the same thing over and over again. Mm. So if we keep doing the same thing, nothing's going to change. Yeah. And so we do something different. You know, I remember I got a call from one of the members. I, I'm un unsure whether it's about for Hillary or Trump. Can you advise me? I said, you've forgotten your own choice. Mm. Well, what do you mean? I said, your own choice means neither. Mm. <laughs> you know, they put up, you know, there may be eight politicians, but you know only two are going to get promoted by the marketing company known as the mainstream media, the portal people. Mm. You know, uh, all the other branches just get ignored. Mm. Uh, and so 
they're programming people into there's only two choices mm. and people go along with it yeah when they forget they have a third choice which is their own and i'm not voting they're not my candidates none of the candidates put forward in essence there may be one or two in ireland are the people's choice mm. it's what they gave you yeah and can i just make a comment on this you know, I, I deregistered from the system over here because I can't vote because I deregistered because I don't have any faith in any politicians. And even like a bit like the Roman Empire, when it started off, they were focusing on helping the people. And by the end of it, they were scratching coins to get the, uh, the gold off so they could keep the gold. And that's, you know, the fall of the Roman Empire. And I do believe that I know people might have good intentions naively, but... You know, I don't need to vote or I don't need to actually have a politician in government to go and help the homeless people. I don't need, you know, it's, they're irrelevant to me who's in government. I can still go off and we can still, me and Steve can still donate and get involved, actively get involved and help the homeless people or help a group or go out and help yeah. somebody. I don't need politics for that. So that's no, kind of you, you don't you don't need their permission. Yeah. Well, you, well, you do in some states. They're arresting people now for feeding the homeless. That's it. Yeah, I've but, heard it, that, yeah. But but again, that's the people's people should stand up and call those cops out, shame them mm. in their own community. Mm. You know, it's all right saying I'm only following orders. Well, well the bloody Nazi party was doing that, yeah. just following orders. But if the orders are not right, you don't do it. Yeah. Well, this is this is the problem, you know, and and even the the police over here. There's uh, stories of police struggling with uh, mortgages and um, and and a lot. So you know, we know they're going through it, but you know, okay, listen, we're going to go through the questions. We have uh, questions from listeners, and we'll go through these. I have more questions, but we'll get these. We'll do the listener questions now. And um, the first one is from Graham, and he said, uh, "Question for Thomas." What are his thoughts on the climate control group Extinction Rebellion? There is a connection to telecom joints and 5G. I've not heard of that group, so I can't really comment. This climate uh, stuff is rubbish. It's another fair program uh, for the people. And for the country level, it's another way to refund the UN, who are now essentially defunct. The Paris Climate Treaty, when the UN was sovereign, they're not no more, which is why they changed it to Paris Climate Agreement. Unless you're sovereign, you can't do treaties. Mm. So people who, who don't think that the UN is not a sovereign anymore, there's your answer. And in it, every country had to give 2% of their GDP to the UN for climate change mm. the UN have never done anything beneficial for humanity mm. UNICEF I've got a, a nice little story for next Thursday about them mm. Ch child trafficking, child pedophilia forced vaccinations mm. and that's what's happening over here Simon Harris, our health minister is actually speaking to the legal eagles about mandating vaccines in Ireland. Surprise, surprise. Okay, you go first, and you can try all of them in one go. Mm. You, if he thinks that, that, that they all work, fine, you go first, you and your family. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, the chances are that's not going to happen. Right, another, no, no. Uh, another question no. for you. Uh, go ahead. It, it's, it's the same with... Uh, Politicians telling you, well, the politicians don't decide, but we have publicly they're telling people to go to war, and then you've got the likes of uh, Bush Jr. jumping out, mm. Romney, he didn't serve either. Mm. You know, none of these elite families people go to war. Mm. In fact, if there's any wars in the future, we use the house families, let them fight. Yeah. Yeah, well, let, let the politicians fight. It's their war. Yeah. Let them go over and fight the war. Um, totally agree. Moon Girl on PIR wants to know, question for Tommy, Tommy's views on the fire reflection on Michelle Obama's wine glass uh, when she was over there in France. Um, it's all in your face. 
you know, people think, oh, this is conspiracy and everything's a conspiracy. But everything is, a, you've got to understand, everything is like a movie scene to them. They play it out. You know, uh, people have, uh, have done a lot over the last 10 years, you know, uh, of proper research, which is why I don't mind the Q phenomena, because people are researching for themselves. That's how uh, people learn themselves, not just listening to me or you or anybody else. They learn and get a grasp of the subject themselves. That's how we found out that uh, woman with the dark hair who was wailing on four different false flags. Yeah. Uh, is, it, uh, is it a massive coincidence that that woman is in three different continents and, and a false flag or, or a, a major event takes place? Well, why haven't the police rested, arrested that woman? Because if that person had a burqa on and uh, was a white cloth and a beard and was seen in all, all three major events... I'm sure they would have been arrested, don't you? Yeah, oh, totally, totally, yeah. Exactly, and you've got uh, this. Is, you know, it's all there. Mm. This is why Craigslist is advertising for actors mm. to act out in event scenes, and then suddenly they worked out, oh, uh, the false flag events, or the uh, deliberate. I'm going to say false flag created situations, like of 9/11. 9-11 put Americans into a coma for a decade. Mm. Most of them. They couldn't handle the fact that their country had been attacked. Because it hadn't. And, and it affects the psyche. Mm. You know? Uh, and, and the same... Uh, the psyche of Ireland in, in the 70s when there's bombs going off. Mm. You know? It affects the psyche. And, and it throws people... Uh, off kilter and off balance and they're always on edge or if I go down this road will there be a landmine will I get shot by the British Army or will I get shot by the IRA mm. to use an example for your own country and it creates a psyche event yeah. and it sends people into stupor and then when they do that then they roll out programs while the people are in a coma like the Patriot Act like what happened in New Zealand uh, that uh, half man, half woman thing, uh, the Prime Minister over there, Adain, rolls out some gun laws. There's always, it's, it's not about the fire in France, it's about three or four other. They always do things for three or four reasons. Yeah. Well, the, the gun laws in New Zealand, they tried to bring in three or four times in the past and failed to do it. So they obviously needed a, a problem reaction solution. It, 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 they sent the people into a coma mm. because of a shocking event that their country, it's always somebody else's country being attacked. And then when it's your country, it's in your back door, people react in horror and they shut down. Mm. They, they know the psychological game. Uh, and the New Zealand people have, have shut down. Mm. They've gone into a, a partial coma. And that's when you then create, as you say, the problem reaction solution. And whilst people are not thinking right, oh my God, you know, and the pain and, and the suffering and seeing people die and all this, and they just sign anything. They'll yeah. go along with anything. And that's why they do it. Yeah. But the, the ultimate thing is creating fear. Mm. And the problem reaction solution, they've been using it for a millennia. Because it oh. works. It works. You know, well, the like, French like, Revolution, the so called Russian Revolution. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's, here's one of the things. Over here in Ireland, we've had a spate of ATMs being stolen. You know, like they have these big diggers on low loaders that come down in the middle of the town. This happened my, in my local town, 10 kilometres away, last week, where they had a low loader with a digger. They stole two ATMs. The police station's only like 500 yards up the road. And yet, they could rob the ATMs and they, could, they got away with them, right? And it's obviously organised crime, well-organised crime. But you, what I said on the show last week was, well, maybe if you think about a problem-reaction solution, where they, you know, they're, you know, they, the banks are going, oh, well, we're having these ATMs being stolen, stolen, and people are saying, what are you going to do about it? And the banks or the politicians say, hey, if we had a cashless society, 
then we wouldn't mm. need ATMs. There you go. Just that. There you go, Alan. Future thinking. Mm. That's what I'm trying to get people to do with THI, is uh, not think of that event and who could have done it and who who gained its what can be uh, arranged or what can come from there. Yeah. So in the future, because that's the way they work. Exactly, and that's why we need to be looking at everything from a problem reaction point of view. And just you know, and there's no the harm. Worst, the worst thing we can ever have uh, on this planet is cashless society. I don't care who doesn't like that uh, suggestion. Uh, cryptos and Bitcoin are going to kill society. Whether you like that idea or not, I'm sorry, I'm warning you. If you don't believe me, go and read Orwell, eighty four again. It tells you, you know, and no, that, that that would never happen, Thomas. Well, I'll give you an example. If someone twenty years ago would have turned around and said to you, "You're not allowed to smoke in a pub or or a football a sport a stadium," you would have laughed. But they did it. Well, here's here's one for you, Thomas. And this <coughs> this video I would use. If I was going to be doing a talk regarding the dangers of Wi-Fi, if people go onto YouTube and type in uh, smoking, an advert for smoking in 1947, you see the doctors smoking in the surgery. And they're, yeah. and they're saying, you should smoke camel cigarettes. We did a survey with all the doctors and they recommend camel cigarettes because they're good for your throat. Now, if I was in around the 1947 and saying to people, don't be smoking, it causes cancer, it can be bad for your health. They'd say, you're a bloody conspiracy theorist. They're doctors, they're qualified, they know what they're yep. doing. Yep, there you go. <laughs> the, the, you know, you can look for many examples. You know, if someone would have said to you in 1970, your child will go from having two vaccinations before the age of six to 38 you would have laughed and called you uh, me a conspiracy theorist, but yeah. it happened, didn't it? If someone would have said to you uh, 20 years ago that a lot of uh, church pastors and priests, including in the Vatican, are pedophiles, you would have laughed. Yeah. But you would be wrong. Uh, and so you can't carry on going, this is woo-woo, because most of the so-called conspiracies now are not conspiracies anymore. They're actually fact. They've been on your portal people news. Yeah. It's it, it, that makes some Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's amazing when you when you look at it. Right, another question for you here. Now obviously Diane I think might be new to PIR so she she's not familiar with your background. So she says, um so this gentleman discounts all the whistleblowers for geoengineering five G. List goes on who risked their lives to expose the slow destruction sabotage of humanity slash earth? All documentations, witnesses. Why? Did he do enough research? <laughs> um, yes, I have. But like I, um, I, I come at things from an overview point of view with a knowledge that they use certain things over and over again in a repeat pattern. And uh, yes, there is issues with some form of climate, which, guess what, who's doing that? The same people that you're trying to take down overall. That they've been messing with uh, harp, you know, uh, they've been messing with uh, chemtrails, but then there was chemtrails going on in the 40s and 50s that people don't even talk about. They, they were spraying syphilis and TB into American towns to see how many died so this is is uh, you have to change the system because if the people rise up and replace the system are we going to be using chemtrails are we going to be using poison drugs are we going to uh, be uh, making kids into a pin cushion so it stops with, with, with us and I've said it quite clearly numbers of times I'm not discounting 5G not being fully beneficial it's likely it's not mm. but it's not a be all and end all that we're all going to die 
like we were all going to die from H1N1, we were all going to die from AIDS. All of those were engineered by the old system. And the only way it stops is we bring the old system down. And we won't stop that by arguing over, over petty points of whether 5G is this or 5G is that, or the Earth's flat or the Earth's round. We just won't. You, you have to have a, a, a more common goal between the people. We're not happy with the system, so we replace the system. Mm. Then the whole system is in the people's control. Are the people going to be uh, uh, pushing 5G? Well, some will, because some will take the envelope in the back pocket. Mm. So that becomes our problem. Mm. And, uh, and that's what I'm trying to get at. I'm not discounting anything. Uh, there is climate change because they've messed with the ionosphere. There's climate change uh, because they've uh, fired harp. Mm. They've they put uh, NASA and and the Russians, I might add, put holes in the ozone layer with those rockets that they were sending up. They don't tell you that. They'll tell you it's some cows or fridges or pe or too many people. I have to it laugh. <clears throat> well, I have to laugh when they, they they say to you, right, you're going to have to reduce your carbon footprint, so knock off your toilet light while flying in the private jets to tell us that. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 as I say, when you overview it, who is the biggest use? The people with wealth. It's not the normal people, is it? No. Definitely not. You know, it's like, uh, you know, we have to change it, you know, and people uh, in Europe complaining about the Africans killing elephants to make money so they can put food on the table. Well, how about uh, instead of uh, denigrating the Africans for k killing the tigers for the skins and, and the elephants for the ivory, how about we, we highlight the uh, poor conditions in Africa and develop their infrastructure with, with proper roads and proper houses and proper businesses like we have in the West so that they don't have to shoot elephants on targets. Mm. It, it, people come, uh, come at it from a, a wrong angle. Look beyond it. Yeah. There's no use arguing about the consequences. Is how, how are you going to change the consequences? And this is all about thinking different again. This is, the, this is the whole idea. We need to stop thinking the way we've been programmed by society and by the system and start taking another look and thinking different. Um, it is important. Um, Dougie has a, a question and Dougie wants to know, has he had a look at EQ, emotional uh, quotient, uh, quotient Q-U-O-T-I-E-N-T, which is the, the capability of individuals to recognise their own emotions and those of others, discern between different feelings and label them appropriately, use, uh, using, uh, use emotional information to guide thinking. Uh, I've not heard that term, but it, you know, it's, uh, people come up with all kinds of fancy terms. It's, the, the gist of it is, are you in tune with yourself? which goes back to what we were talking about earlier about elevating people above yourself mm. no one is above your own heart mm. you've just forgotten it so when, when you stop idolizing uh, gods and, and, and uh, deities of the uh, earthly ones or not then you have to focus on you yourself because you know people have heard people talking about uh, we need uh, health technology, and we need right machines, and we need uh, uh, DNA cell cell structure machines. You know what? You've already got it. It's called you. Mm. you just, again, you've forgotten your own power, and this is what happens when uh, you know people go into themselves and start understanding themselves better. That they're just as important as anybody else. And dealing with their shadow sides and integrating the shadow and dealing with your inner trauma that you've hidden lower and lower like a tightly wound onion. Now pull those layers off. 
Will it be painful? Yes, be because you left it to stew and fester, which then influences the exhale version of you and you become a projection. So you project at somebody else, some anger at somebody else, when really the anger is internal. Mm. And, uh, and you, when you come in tune with yourself, you, uh, which is non-gratification, which is where people have issues, they want the external gratification. I got 50,000 likes on my Facebook page. But the biggest like you can ever have is to like yourself. Yeah. To love yourself. Mm. People have to find their own confidence and, and step out and say, look, this is me, this is who I am, like me, if you, if you like me, great, if you don't like me, that's fine as well. Because if you put on a mask, you're going to attract the wrong people to, to your energy. You have to be yourself. If you're, if you, I, I've said this time and time again, and when I ran my own spiritual circle, I used to say this, as, as part of spiritual development, I also included personal development. And it's to f for people to find their own confidence and to say, this is me, if you like me, great, if you don't like me, that's fine, but I'm not going to put a mask on for anybody because I don't want to attract the wrong people. And you will do that if you put the wrong mask on, just to be liked. The, the masks are collapsing, you know. Uh, I will, uh, gave our members a head up um, two and a half years ago now that the masks of illusion would be fallen. And we, we will see a lot more exposure. People will be exposing each other and they will expose themselves. You no longer can hide behind the lies of your own insecurity and your own inner traumas. It's going to spill out. And this is why we're seeing a lot of chaos and people are losing it. Uh, be, because they're not used to dealing with their own thing. It's always somebody else's fault. Or they're always focused on what the... the the family next door is doing uh, I think he's carrying on or I think he's working off on the door who cares you focus on your family and, and your inner, inner issues and get stronger uh, and more beneficial within yourself which then grows your consciousness which then leads to higher soul development which leads to information coming to you rather than you researching for it and then your junk DNA starts getting to be switched on then you can heal yourself mm. we don't need machines yeah that's the external yeah. we need to be uh, focusing on you the, know, the, the ancient the ancient builders didn't need machines to build the pyramids they didn't use machines the Tartarian buildings and the Rus buildings they didn't use machines for that mm. they, they used their inner technology, which is why this vessel and this spirit and soul is so precious throughout the galaxy and beyond. We have all the tools, and we have to start using them. Mm. And we've talked about this off air, haven't we, about trying to put something yeah. together for that, to try and give the knowledge back to the people to be able to do that. Yeah, well, that's where we have to change the school system. Mm. You know, that's got to be completely scrapped, the current curriculum. It's beyond a joke. And so there's another profession, that, uh, and it's going to be the biggest, because we have to teach the youth how to be self-sustaining. Mm. No one knows how to grow anything anymore. Mm. And that's deliberate, because then you have to go to them for your water, them for your food, them for your money, mm. which is what a cashless society is. They have it all. And then they decide when they can give it to you back. It's like a bank. They've already started it. You go into a bank and ask for $10,000 uh, or euros. They go, oh, no, you'll have to come back. You're only allowed X amount. Mm. That's my effing money. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and that is, that is the case. That is the case. Yeah. I, I've had a, a friend of mine who actually, her daughter uh, received uh, some money uh, from a claim and she had it in the bank. And she went to take it out, it was a few grand, and the bank manager was trying to find every excuse in the book to stop her from taking the money out. And she had to let a shout at him and say, that's my daughter's money, give her her money. And in the yeah. end, like, he had to give it to her, but he was making phone calls and, oh yeah, I can't get it out. Because again, they need the money in there to fractionalise the money to lend 
you know, uh, money back out and, and carry yeah. on the con. And this is the whole idea of the three grand. Um, and we did talk about, uh, actually this last night, about self-sufficiency. Do you want to give us, we'll get into the more of the positives. Do you want to give us an update for people who obviously haven't been um, aware of the, the trust and Kim and what you're doing and, and where you're at with the foundation and what's happening with all that at the moment? Do you want to give us an update? Well, we're working with um, bigger organisations now that have uh, enforcement that can get things done uh, should they do things the right way. Um, yeah, of course, I put it out in the show about working with the Pentagon. Now, you know, people are complaining we shouldn't be giving them money, and, and on the face of it, I would agree. Um, but they, the, there was conditions, and the conditions was that they protected all Americans, its interest, and the country only. Mm. So that then um, stops all the uh, neocon clowns operating for and on behalf of the country known as Israel uh, from attacking all, all their interests, North American interests. So it may seem a subtle change, but it's actually a major change. And if they uh, continue in the same manner that uh, has been going on in discussions in the last two weeks, the, uh, it could get real interesting. And suddenly, uh, the Rothschilds have lost um, their power. Uh, and, and the Rothschilds and the Dragon Groups, who are the real runners of uh, countries and governments, uh, have lost their stage because the US military has been their stage for collecting resources for the last 70 years mm -hmm. 80 years now since World War II when they had all these uh, agreements set up and the Bretton Woods uh, was the financial one and then you had the, the UN was set up uh, replacing the League of Nations and a whole heap of other things that were set up in and around World War II whilst they're supposed to be fighting each other, they're all uh, doing meetings together, high-level meetings together, and working out, uh, divvying up the planet. Mm. You know? And so, uh, it's been a bit of a slog trying to get through to all these top so-called organisations who all think that they're all so important in the old system when actually they were all pawns. Uh, and they were allowed to, you know, uh, it kind of staggered us when the Pentagon turned around and says, oh, so what are you telling us we've been allowed to? <laughs> yeah, we've only been telling you that uh, over a period of time, but it takes time for people to get a grasp of it. Yeah. It's, it's like people, new people coming to my show, uh, they're going to get bamboozled with all the, from Russia with all of the control structure, the factions, and, um, you know, it, it's not... Um, prominent in the alt media and then of course you have the man of world Hold and trust mm. you know it, it's a lot of information to take in and, and some people uh, react to it in uh, in a different way where they, they oh no that's too much uh, that's all we will it's the easy cop out because they can't face up to uh, unlearning the lies mm. and uh, you know I've said in the show the illiterate for this century is not going to be like the last century for those who couldn't read and write. The illiterate for this century is those who couldn't unlearn the lies. Mm. And trust me, it's it's amazing. Even though people want change, they they find it hard yeah. to actually believing what's going on. Um, and they, they, it's like Stockholm syndrome to a certain extent. They'll question yeah. the information you give them instead of questioning what they're being told by the media and the politicians. And you think, well, no, you have to question, you know, don't, I mean, question what they're doing. Don't, you know, no. I mean, if they, I don't have a problem if people ask me about certain things, I'll give them the information. But a lot of the time, they, they go, well, I don't believe that. And I think, well, <laughs> well you know, I'm, you, check it out. Don't, well, don't believe what again, I say. We'll, you know? we'll, do, we'll double back to an earlier question. Mm -hmm. The question as to whom what I am or whom what Kim is, mm. and yet never ever throughout their whole life have questioned a single politician and asked 
who are they and why are they there? Mm. Or, yeah. or a bank manager, what makes you qualified to look after my money? Mm. Or the doctor, what makes you think you're qualified to look after me, all my family, all my friends? Nobody asks them questions, they just accept it. And yet someone comes along who wants to improve things and do things in a better way for the benefit of all. Oh no, we'll, we'll ask them a plethora of questions. And that's fine. But do you do it in other walks of life? You know, people said about well, why is Kim the trustee? Did people ask why Mardik was the trustee? Mm. Or why Mandela was a trustee, or Gaddafi was a trustee, or Marcus was a trustee. Did you go and ask them, why are they trustees? Mm. No. It's yeah. wrong thinking. Yeah. You've got to apply it to all. You can't just apply it to the few who are actually bothered to try and help uh, all the people on the planet, not just one country or one state or one city. Mm. Okay, I've Did got you? a couple of questions for you there, Tom. Okay. Um, Moon Girl on PIO wants to know what does Thomas think of Earhart having a black hole? I, I haven't heard that one myself. Um, I would suggest um, if you watched um, Tom, at the Shannara Chronicles, there was another series that was Shannara Chronicles was a spin off from that. It's on Netflix. Um, I might remember it in a minute. Okay. If, if you are uh, uh, operating in the dark, then your heart darkens, literally. You know, and uh, maybe we could get a nap for that and, uh, and a nap for karma, because if we had a nap for uh, darkness and an app for karma, everyone can see who's who. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and maybe uh, some of the uh, karma might get reduced quickly. You know, um, and pe get people to look at it, but it's a hidden element, uh, and because people don't go in within themselves enough, they don't uh, and understand themselves. Maybe uh, it'd uh, be like a credit score system that China has <laughs> with karma. Yeah, yeah. Your 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 karma is four hundred and fifty. You want to reduce that down, you know? Yeah, uh, you know, it's uh, and there'll be someone with the. Uh, um, the uh, envelope in the back pocket to not calm it off. They can, <laughs> they, they, they'll probably control the system uh, like crypto and Bitcoin, which is run by the NSA and, and Langley. Yeah, I tell you, folks, <laughs> if if it's not in your hand, you don't have it. So just be aware so, of that. Uh, in, in this uh, the series, there's Pumpers, Stiltskin, and all the old characters. Um, it's unusual for me to not remember something. No, it'll come back to it, you it, as we're talking. It, uh, if, as you are doing more and more things for the dark, the heart went black and blacker and blacker, and eventually it packs in. Mm. Yeah, and that's you know, uh, it would be a nice visual because then everything is transparent. Mm. If you're going the wrong path, service to self and not caring for others and your heart is darkening and your life is fading away because of it, mm. it might make people think again. Mm. Well, maybe one day we'll have something like that. Um, Joan wants to know, when does Thomas see a change happening which makes people like himself and so many others that educate us in what is real, months, years or whatever? Um, basically, uh, I suppose what's going to help is when the release of the trust funds happen, but we can't give any dates out for obvious reasons. No, uh, well, that series is once upon a time, by the way. Uh, oh, okay. But uh, no, there is no timelines. It happens when it happens. Um, I know uh, certain other channels keep saying uh, it's close and it's happening this week and it's happening next week. Uh, no, it happens when it happens. You know, um, all, all it's doing is putting pressure on Kim and putting pressure on, on myself also. You know, we have lots to do, um, you know, trying to teach people that they've gone down the wrong path. Uh, you know, all the clans, Kim's spoken to all the clans. There's a, a lot of work that's been done that's not been seen. 
and again people are looking for the external and, and the fun coming out is an external thing and forgetting the internal thing is the funds coming out is not is not going to change anything unless you have changed yourself and the way you think you know if your if your goal is to be a millionaire you're not thinking right you're thinking the old way which failed you know if your goal is to uh, just have your own company with your own name on it that's ego that hasn't worked for the Rothschilds has it yes they'll have they've got loads of pieces of paper and loads of wealth and do this that and the other but are they happy no otherwise their hearts would be darkened and they look like death warmed up you know uh, so we have to do things in, in a, a different way uh, um, essentially um, what I'm looking for and uh, Ramona said it uh, great yesterday we have to be resourceful just because there'll be uh, loads of funds available we're not going to be like the DOD and just waste it mm. we have to be resourceful we have to recognise it not in terms of pieces of paper with numbers on we have to recognise it as people's life force energy and when you really understand that concept then you're on the way to developing yourself in a much better way and much clearer thinking of, of what, what this is all about it's about restoring life force energy ok you know, I'm going to be devil's advocate on this one because it's something yeah. that's been said to me on a couple of occasions when I explain the foundation and Kim uh, to people who are not aware of it which happened this morning funny enough I was on a Skype call with somebody and they would never heard of you the foundation or Kim or anything like that and I had to give them I had to give them a condensed version and they said to me I'm finding hard to find it hard to get my head around this and I said well I told you that at the start I said, I'm giving you a condensed version of just 10 hours of podcast there, which will give you a much better idea. But he did say that, but I've, I said, I'm, I am very sceptical. He was open-minded, which is fair enough. He said, but I'm very sceptical, he said, because there's been a lot of these inverted commas saviors of people that's going to help save the planet or have a financial release or, you know, two weeks maybe, uh, you know yourself. So, um, so for people who take that kind of approach to what you're doing, do you want to take a, a, a comment on that? Well, it, it's it's fine to be sceptical uh, and ask the right questions to get an understanding, but it's also your responsibility if you uh, are on board with some of it to get as much information, and all the information has been put out already. There's a, a vast volume of shows there, mm. uh, including your own, because you, you know you've brought it up many times in your own shows. So, if you're unsure on something and you think it's a good idea, then that's down to you to go and get more information. It's not up to me or you to convince them that this is the right thing. It's up to the individual, mm. you know, and. Uh, that's what the archives are there for. Use them. Yeah. You know, uh, me trying to convince you is not helping. Yeah. And it's really. And to be honest with you, you don't. You shouldn't need to convince anybody. It's up to them to go and do the research. And if it resonates with them, and this is what I said to the to the to the chap. I said, look, if it resonates with you, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's it. But don't go and do the research, and go and check it out first. Don't make a decision without going and finding out about it first. And then when you find out about it and you do the 10 hours and listen to the information, then after that, you'll have the knowledge to make the choice. Not ignorance, because ignorance is yeah. a lack of knowledge, but you'll have the knowledge to make the choice to see if that resonates with you. And if it doesn't, then that's fine. But yeah. you, you shouldn't be... It will not selling anything uh, that's the no. one the, that's what we said last night on the call with everybody on THI yeah. this is we're, not about not, selling anything no we're not marketing we're not branding mm. we, we don't have to sell it mm. you know the funds come out actually uh, it's going to I would hope actually personally that it's going to be low key mm. but, but, so it gives the people who set up the, the, the countries uh, and the states an opportunity to get their feet under the table they would they will be supported first because thi has been with the trust from day one 
So, um, from my perspective, I want to look after every JHI member and also the OYM members as well. Uh, and, and they're going to be put in, in the uh, roles of uh, distributing the, the funds for their individual state or their country. Why? Because they've been taught in, in, in a better way of how to look after things. Mm. Not let's throw money here, there and everywhere. No, we have to be responsible with it. it, it you know, and so I don't want it splashed everywhere. Yes, the THI information uh, and uh, a lot of the intel that comes out of our show needs to go everywhere so people have a better understanding what life's all about, how it was, uh, how it is now, and how we're going to go forward. Uh, but the actual trust itself and, and, and the relevant people's clubs around the world, I'd rather it start off low-key mm. so we can help uh, people in their own region, in their own state, and, and it gives the people an opportunity who are in those roles to get their feet on the tables. Not everyone's business minded, in fact, most aren't. Uh, and even the ones who are business minded really need to rethink of how they run this, not as a business, as a cooperation, mm. a cooperative where everyone has a say. Mm. You know, just because you're a leader doesn't mean to say you have to rule domain over everybody else. Yeah. That's the old way. And that's, 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 that's something that we, we, it's something that we have to say with THI as well, because we are trying to think different. And one of yeah. the things that we, we said last night with the group was that, one, we don't need to advertise THI because we're not selling anything. And mm -hmm. basically we have to be, careful of uh, p you know egos because sometimes people will feel they're in a position of, uh, of control if they're at the top of the group and that's not what it's all about the THI groups are cooperatives and that means everybody has a say and can get involved in it and I think that's important yeah well you look at the um, the former connection you have with the trust and the kingdom of manor mm. one group went round collecting titles numbers of them look at me, I'm important, and did nothing. The other stayed quiet, is named after a cartoon character, and did vast amounts of important work. Which one's relevant? Mm. And that's the key. Mm. Yeah. You know, that, that, that is being the change. Jasper and the Kingdom Man want to carry on the old way of I'm important and I'm this title and that title. That system failed. It's not our system. How can you talk about changing for everyone as long as that person's the king and I rule and domain over you? No. Nobody rules over anybody. We all have to learn to work together as equals, regardless of positions. Mm. Mr. Trump may be doing an important job. He's not more than an important person than any other American. He's just doing the job. Um, Paddy wants to know on PIR, um, the money given out by the trust, will it have an interest rate? No. No. No, there, there's no interest. Um, it's not a bank. The trust is not a bank, just to let people know. It's not a bank. No, there'll be, there'll be certain programs or projects that are run where it may... Um, some uh, countries may decide, let's use an example, say um, the state of Iowa decides I'd like to um, the trust to pay off credit cards, so to get everyone off uh, credit card debt. Well, that's an opportunity um, to use a better, uh, the older term, of marketing the people's club. Because you then give that person an option. So say uh, person A comes and says, I've got $3,000 worth of credit card debt and I can't pay it. Well, what can you pay? Well, if my, I'm paying $100 a month now, I can pay 50 And the People's Club pays that $3,000 off. Well, we could actually go to, for argument's sake, Chase or Bank of America, whoever owns the credit card, and say, we are the People's Club, we're going to pay this debt off, we want a reduction. 
it gets people uh, paying on, so to speak. And so that person then is now free of credit card debt. Well, well, that's only solved that problem today. What are the problems further down the line? Is that person just going to go and do another splurge on the credit card because the people's clubs played it off? Well, that's not going to help, is it? So it will be a part teaching program as well, how to work with your money better. And, and if they want to pay it back, fine. If they don't, that's fine also. But the, the, we're putting the responsibility then on the person of educating them in a better way of how to not put yourself in debt again because we're not bailing you out again and also paying back into the system that's going to help somebody else's uh, credit cards be eliminated yeah no that's that, and that's the thing again it's got to do with thinking different um, and, uh, and and thinking a different way Right, okay, let's see, is there any more questions there? Uh, no, we're okay with that. Right, okay, that's good. Okay, well, we are nearing that time, and um, uh, d there was a quick question from a lady on PAR, said, uh, can you ask uh, Thomas about your thoughts on the UN? We have about two minutes. Can you do something in two minutes about the UN? Uh, the, the UN is a defunct organisation that was designed by the system to trample all over people and steal resources of every country. It's not sovereign anymore, it can't do treaties anymore, and uh, eventually uh, it will be shut down. Kim is actually the head of the UN. Now, obviously there's a, a logistics issue of being able to um, push that into something that's external so that people know. And, the, and they're carrying on with the illusion. But the, the Manor World Holding Trust has six seats on the UN that's not being filled. Uh, you know, if we could go there, Kim and I would go there. If we got one afternoon between us and the UN, we could change an awful lot. But you can't travel at the moment, sure you can't? Yeah, but it's a safety issue. Yeah, exactly. Um, what's the story, um, just very quickly again, somebody mentioned about the current fee currency is a debt instrument and it's not a credit instrument. What's the plan of attack with the foundation and uh, about fixing that? I, it, is there going to be a, would you think about using a new currency because of the way, you know, currency is at the moment? Well, well currency is not money for the start. Mm -hmm. uh, currency is a money substitute, which is why when you uh, pay off your mo uh, mortgage with currency, You've only discharged your debt, you haven't paid off your debt. That's why you're the tenant when you've bought your house. Mm. And so, uh, the, uh, going down the line, we have to introduce the only real uh, currency, which is gold and silver coins. And do you it, has, it has to be supported by gold and silver coins. You can have a substitute, which is valid, of using the dollar, but it has to be supported by the asset. And this is what they've been doing. There's, there's no assets to support it. If people think Fort Knox is full of gold, think again. It's long gone. That was one of the questions, actually, that I, I was asked about if this money is going to be released by the trust, is it going to be backed by anything? And you've just answered that there, yes, there's going to be assets. Well, well, well the, uh, we've already spoken to various uh, central banks and treasuries. The, the, uh, the idea is that the treasury once we've cleaned out Munchkin and the other goons out of there, uh, the Treasury then becomes the central bank for America. So there's no more Federal Reserve. Uh, and the central banks in the other countries become like the Treasury. Um, and each country then becomes autonomous with the money. At the moment, er, er, people who uh, have to use dollars have to purchase them from the Federal Reserve at 10% on the dollar. Could including, okay. including America. So then you, uh, so say you had a central bank in Ireland, uh, that uh, country would print their own money. I was just about to say that. Not, yeah. not collecting it from Brussels or, or the Bank of England. No. Ireland then becomes autonomous. Yeah. Uh, and so Britain then produces pounds, if that's the way they're going to, or sterling. Yeah. If they, you know, uh, America may be a silver dollar. Yeah. 
Okay, that's it. that answers that. I was just about to say that. Right, Thomas, we've reached that time. Uh, brilliant information as usual. Uh, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Give out all your contact details and your bits and pieces there so people know where to uh, find you. Uh, link for the show every Thursday, uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is Spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash 895-5881 or just type in Tommy Williams on the YouTube channel. You can find all the archives there. You can go to our website, thinkdifferent.thepeoplesclub.org. It's got all the archives there. It's got all the Manor World Holding Trust and Kim shows in its own section. The must-listen-to shows uh, for anyone new to us. If you listen to those 11 shows in order, and you place them in order for a reason, it's a storybook. Uh, you will get the full gist of what THI is all about and also the Manor World Holding Trust is all about. Um, we have the Facebook and MeWe. And uh, the foundation site is thepeoplesclub.org. Brilliant stuff. Okay, Thomas, just stay with us there. I'm just going to go off to a musical break and we'll be back after this. You're listening to Alan James on Circle of White Light Radio and People's Internet Radio. There you go. Great information from Thomas, as usual. Um, there's a lot of work, uh, folks, going on in the background with THI and the People's Club. Uh, as I said, we had a big meeting. I think Thomas counted about 78 people at one time um, together on Zoom. Uh, all different people from different countries coming together and pushing forward with a, a new way of thinking. And um, working on the idea of the you know funds being released and um, setting up um, different uh, foundations and uh, humanitarian projects. That's really what it's all about. And uh, so that's kind of being pushing ahead. It's not a case of advertising it. They don't need advertising. And um, we want to kind of start this slowly and do it gradually, and and get the you know the eyes dotted and the teeth crossed before we actually uh, get it up and running for uh, for people to start submitting their ideas. Plus the fact that, you know, we don't really know when the funds are going to be released because of all the shenanigans that the cabal are doing. Now, there's a lot of people walking away from the system at the moment and stepping down, which is great. Uh, but you're still going to have people playing games. Like uh, Thomas has said about the, the Treasury, there's a few people in there playing, playing uh, silly games. So once they're kind of sorted out and taken out and the funds are released and not messed around with, um, then it's a case of um, once the money's in to get the ball rolling. And um, the plan of attack is to start changing Ireland and make Ireland a better place um, and uh, start uh, funding humanitarian projects, and which will all go through the People's Club head office and, and all that. There's a lot involved. There's a lot of kind of... Not so much paperwork, but there's processes that are going to be put in because you have to be careful. There's always going to be somebody trying to abuse the system in some way. Um, so we're all, there's a lot of things being put in place to stop that from happening. Uh, a lot of systems being put in place, a lot of restrictions and uh, control uh, mechanisms being put in place purely to stop that from happening. Um, so that's all in, in flux at the moment. Um, so there you go. That's uh, that's what's what's happening. So we'll just keep you. I'll just keep you posted with that. If there's any news to talk about it, uh, anything to be said, I'll let you know. But at the moment, it's just background work that's happening. So we are um, we're, we're we're doing our best anyway. And um, just to catch up on the news for the people who joined late, who didn't hear the news at the start, that a well-known um, person in the alternative media. Uh, one of the uh, the older guys, the uh, uh, a chap that has been doing it for a long time, a chap called Anthony J. Hilder, uh, last Thursday uh, passed away after a very long illness. Anthony J. Hilder was one of the first people that, first big hitters that we had on OIM years ago, thanks to uh, a chap called Alan Carner, who is a musician, and we played some of Alan's music on the show. And we were delighted to have Anthony on the show it was just fantastic. We couldn't believe that we're getting Anthony J. Hilder and his Luminazzi comment that he used to make when he used to do his shows. And it was uh, it was great. You know, it was great having him on. I think we had him on again after that as well, uh, which was brilliant. So um, it's sorry to see him pass over. But uh, like Jim Mars, Jim Mars was on the show as well. And 
these are the old guys who are really uh, they they we stand on their shoulders really, and that's what really were, what it's all about. And um, so you know, hopefully he's in a better place um, than uh, than being down here. But he did a lot, an awful lot of work and exposed an awful lot. Now for the show next week, we have a chap coming on called Anthony Flynn. And Anthony is down in Australia, so it's going to be silly hours for Anthony when he comes on the show. And he's going to be talking about New Earth and the awakening of humanity. And basically, um, Anthony gets into looking at the, not so much the woo-woo stuff, but he looks at the old spiritual awakening. And he wants to combine it with a new way of thinking also. And he does courses down in Australia and he teaches a lot of people about this. And uh, so it's going to be interesting to get Anthony on and talk to him about what he knows. And as I say, it's going to be early in the morning, so he's going to need a lot of coffee. But we'll get him on anyway. Um, There's a couple of other people that I'm looking to get on. Also, I may be returning people that we've had on OAM that I'd like to get back on. And uh, be talking positive, talking about things that are going on. Um, And um, so I'm going to be working on that. Keep an eye out on the... Uh, website circleofwhitelight.com have a look at the schedule and check it out and just a few things I'm toying around with um, Steve's having a, a good break he's away in holiday this weekend with the wife um, doing a bit of celebrating so he's enjoying the rest uh, and uh, I don't know whether he's tuning into the show tonight I hope not because he should be enjoying himself with his wife and not listening to the show so um, so there you go so what else is on the agenda right okay we also have um, the the three amigos are going to be on tomorrow at 9 p.m. on PIR, and they'll be discussing the possibility of another manipulated credit crunch, and could the west coast of Scotland vast oil and gas reserves be used as collateral, same as Irish Corb Field oil field was grabbed by the banker, um, and callers are welcome. So if you want to pop over to the three amigos 9 o'clock PIR tomorrow night. That's what they're going to be talking about. And we had the, the acid grab over here. Remember we had that chap on and uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman on OAM Radio. And he was telling us what their plans were and how they did it. And how they strip mined each country. Um, Parkins was his name. John, John Parkins or John Perkins was his name. And the interview is on YouTube if you want to uh, have a listen to that. It's very, very interesting. Um, and how they did it and it's just amazing when you look at how our history has been changed and all the things that they've been manipulating and controlling everything is just unbelievable what goes on and um, a lot of that stuff uh, thomas has talked about on his podcast so if you have time pop over to thomas's website and have a listen to uh, the podcast and it's definitely an eye-opener and again i'm not saying you have to believe it but entertain it at least and say, well, if what if what if that is the case that um, that did happen? You know, what's what's the impact on the planet and on the people on the planet? So that's very important, anyway. But uh, anyway, for myself, Alan James, and Circle White Light Radio, thanks a lot for tuning in, folks. Uh, the people on the chat room, fantastic questions. Great people on the chat room chatting away there, both on PAR and uh, Circle of White Light. Thanks again for tuning in. Much appreciated. Um, as I say, the guest on the show next week is Anthony Flynn. And um, if you have any news, if you have any feedback or any information you want to send over to us, you can send it to me at contact us at circleofwhitelightradio.com or go to the website and jump on the contact form and send in a message on the contact form. Uh, also, just a reminder that we do have PayPal on the circleofwhitelight.com. You can donate there. Or if you want to carry on donating via Patreon, thanks a lot. Um, it's much appreciated. We do have costs. They have to be paid, and it's, it's really appreciated. Anything you can afford, it really does help. Uh, so a big thank you again, and we'll see you next week. Take care, and bye-bye. <laughs>